Oprah, tell me why you wanted to come here to talk to Charla Nash. I wanted to talk to her because I just wanted to see how someone who can survive something that horrific manages to get themselves up and keep going. And um, I have, as you have, interviewed all kinds of people with uh, disabilities and uh, unfortunate circumstances and uh, burn victims and tragic accidents. I will have to say I've never seen anything quite like, like uh, what has happened to her. And uh, also n never felt a spirit like that that is, um, so, has such resolve and also such, such resolve to get better and um, such a sense of resilience. It really, uh, really made me think that uh, I'll never complain about another thing ever yeah. again. Yeah. I can tell you're very moved by yeah, this experience yeah. of talking mm -hmm. to her. Does she remember the 12 minutes of that attack? She, doesn't she does not remember anything about the attack. She doesn't recall even going to um, uh, her employee's, employer's home. She doesn't remember anything of that. She uh, only recalls having been awakened from the coma and being told what had happened to her. And she said that uh, she had trouble, you know, understanding what that is, and she was confused about what that is. And only recently, uh, in the past couple of weeks, did she realize that she no longer had eyes because she had been saying that um, she was was hoping to be able to to be able to see at some point? And only recently was she told that she no longer had eyes, and she said that was the first time she realized that she never would be able to see again because she actually didn't have eyes. And, you know, I, um, I don't think that she understands the severity of um, the, the, the devastation to, to her face. And uh, I don't think she actually really cares at this point. Wow. She really wants to just get better. You know, she really just wants to get better. Does she feel or does she think that she might be a candidate for a transplant? Because here at the clinic, as you know, they mm -hmm. did the world's first full transplant in the last year. I mean, is this something that she yeah. has talked to her? Yeah. She mentioned about? that she, she, she would like to have the possibility of that. I didn't dwell on that with mm -hmm. her, but she did mention that she would like to be able to possibly have that happen to her. More importantly, though, she talked about being able to move from the Cleveland Clinic, move from this place, to be able to live in some kind of um, uh, assisted living service so that she could also maintain her independence. You know, what, what really struck me is that she uh, is a good mother, and like all good mothers, she's worried about, you know, her, her daughter. And, 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 and you know, she's, she's sitting there, this is her birthday, this is her 56th birthday today, and um, she's worried about whether her daughter is going to choose the appropriate prom dress and um, worried that she won't be there for that. So I, I have to tell you, it's, a, it's a, one of those stories about the resilience of the human spirit that makes us all take a, take a, a different look at our own lives. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank so you. Much. Thank you.